My name is CJ. Um, I work with Geekbox IT. I am one of the tech, spe tech support specialists here, but or I'm more kind of the in-house Roost specialist as well, um, working as the back-end dev for this project. And we are essentially working on a vehicle status app that allows all of our technicians to check out a vehicle um, and keep everyone in the company updated. And I'm also joined by my coworker, Kyle Weekly. Hey, my name is Kyle. I'm a technician at Geekbox. I also do a lot of Roost stuff with CJ as well. So it's good to meet you guys. Nice to meet you, Kyle. So I'll go ahead and share my screen here. And I believe it's sharing now. So this is our ticket dashboard. We use Autotask. Over here on the right is actually an app builder setup that we've created. Um, we only have five vehicles at the moment, so it's just showing those vehicles here. And the first three are actually electric vehicles, so we're able to track their charges as well here through an API, which allows us to know if the vehicles are actually charged or not, if people can drive them. <laughs> so if they're not charged, we know not to take those, and you don't have to waste you know 15 minutes going out to the parking lot, finding that, and then coming back and going over and over again. All right. And then, so how we did this is first we set up a custom integration with the Verizon Connect app. It doesn't actually connect directly to the car. It's connecting to our dash cams, which are connected into the, I think the ODBC reader um, in the car or whatever it's called. Uh, I'm not a mechanic, um, but that actually pulls in all the Verizon or all the data into Verizon, which allows us to pull it through API into our app. And then, so after the custom integration was all set up, we then created this workflow here that actually pulls that data in. And we didn't want to pull in too much data all the time. So we made a little time thing. So it only actually pulls this in during our business hours. And then here's just the auth token. And then it actually pulls that data in. But unfortunately, whenever the car is not on, it actually won't send that data correctly. It'll be null. So we also have to check to make sure it's not null so it doesn't delete the uh, the organization variables. So um, it's just kind of an in-depth process when it comes to all that kind of stuff. But we also integrated this all with our um, text bot. So um, I think Brandon Martinez Kika um, showed everyone how to actually set up <laughs> Teams bots. And so we are using that to allow people to manually control when they check those out via Teams messages. So they will send in a message that says something like, bolt one or bolt two, and then that will get parsed out into the different messages that they can actually change the statuses to. And then from here, I will actually let Kyle control my computer so he can show you how the front end works on this. Yeah, so as soon as someone updates the uh, status through Teams, um, it goes into our front end, which you saw with Autotask. So the way we keep that updated is we have a script template here that refreshes that app, I believe, every minute. Um, so it refreshes it, but then each car has its own HTML container and app builder. So we were able to pull in the JavaScript function for that actually changes the CSS classes. But the other really cool thing was is we figured out how to pull in CSS templates as well so we were able to build the entire front end in app builder and then write the css over here and then pull it into each container because originally like i had a whole bunch of inline styles and it looked really really terrible uh, but then we figured out how to use the templates to actually pull css in and design the app a lot better um, so here is an overview of the functions for one of the bolts so there's a function for each status here. It changes the color of the box on our screen based on the status that was sent. Um, and the one really cool thing we did with Teams as well is with this RTB status here, you won't see it in the JavaScript, but it's back on the workflow that CJ was showing originally. But when someone sets the bolt as RTB, it will change it on our dashboard. And then it also sends a message into our company chat to let to let everyone know which technician is back or coming back and what bolt they're coming back in. Um, so that was really great. Um, let's see. So yeah, that's this is the front end for the actual box. And then we also have the functions here for the charge bars. 
So those update every time the car pulls a new charge, it updates here and shows on our dashboard. So it makes it really easy for us to decide which cars to take out on our service calls. Um, let's see here. But yeah, um, really the most difficult part about doing all of this was trying to maintain like the live data and making it show up as things happen. Um, and then handling some of the data inconsistencies as well. So the Verizon app itself will only ping back charge status when the car is turned on. So, I mean, it's pretty accurate and helpful, but I just wish the Verizon app would just give us more data if the car was charging. But other than that, like it, it's been really helpful for making sure that we know where our cars are and which ones are the best vehicles to take out for service calls. Um, but yeah, I'll pass it back over to CJ to talk about some of the challenges and the lessons we learned. So yeah, most of the challenges we learned was um, actually getting to pull the JavaScript in, which I think it was two or three open mics ago, we saw someone doing this template thing where you could set up a script and then just import that through a template. And we thought that was a really cool idea. So we, of course, Robin duplicated it. And then we were like having a lot of issues with the CSS issue of the inline styling and um, Kyle had a really great idea of just what if we did that as a template as well, and it worked perfectly. Um, and so it really just optimized all of our uses here and made it to where we could essentially have, you know, like OOP styled development along with like classes and actually <laughs> using our programming knowledge to pull this in. Um, so I'll just show a quick little demo of how it works real quick, and then uh, we'll open the floor to any questions and move on. So this is our little vehicle status. It just kind of tells everyone where it is. And then here's the bot where we actually do that. You can see where I was testing it a little earlier today. But usually we'll just type in bolt one or bolt whatever. And then you can type it all the way out, like available or unavailable or whatever. And we usually just use one letter to make it quick, though. So it'll post it there. And then you'll get a response from there, which we usually use ChatGPT to make like little custom messages, so I forgot to change the title there. Um, but then you go back to Teams and go to the vehicle status, and you can see that at 3.30, it was changed right there. And then back on the dashboard, you can see that it's now unavailable. And then I'll go back and just switch it back because this is actually available and I would like to make it useful. We'll see that it should be logged now. Go back here, and it refreshes every minute, so I'm just going to manually refresh it. And it's all good. All right, but that's uh, pretty much all we have there. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. I have, I have a ton of questions. So uh, this one's technical. The, By the way, really awesome work, guys. Um, Thanks. <laughs> the, uh, the, the frame on the right with the bolt status, is that um, authenticated or unauthenticated? Like yeah, so we actually had the question about that. Um, <laughs> this is, we're having to log in with our actual users every time, and the session expires every like 26 hours or something like that. So it is kind of a pain that we have to log in every day. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of the limitations of it since there's not really like a public facing app that we can just have open and not have to log in every time that we know of anyway. Yeah, um, we're working on making that better. So uh, that's why I asked that question. <laughs> and then the next thing is how, um, do you have any way to uh, quantify like how much this is saving you? Like, is this saving you a lot of time, a little time? Um, I mean, I don't know, how much would you say, Kyle? Like. Every time we pick up a wrong vehicle, it usually takes us about, you know, five minutes to walk out to the parking lot, figure out that the car is not available, and then we have five minutes to walk back. And then yeah. <laughs> five minutes to walk back out there with another key. So I guess we're probably saving about 15 to 20 minutes every time. Yeah, Take knowing time. knowing exactly which car to take definitely saves time. Because, um, yeah, our parking lot's a little far away. So um, if we go out there and the car is actually not here, then... It's definitely a waste of time. It calls us to be late, and you know. So this was really helpful for making sure that we're on time and, you know, not wasting any time. <laughs> uh, and then tell me a little bit about 
um, Geekbox, how how many employees? Uh, I think we're at 11 right now, 11 or 12. I think so, yeah. That sounds right. Um, I, By the way, I knew that about you folks, and I thought that's super cool uh, that an approximately 10-person um, MSP is working so diligently on automation. Uh, how did you get um, senior leadership uh, buy-in? Like, how do you get your execs to let you make the business better through automation? Uh, well, Eric actually wants us to do this all the time. So he's pretty much like pushing us to work on this and we're always just like, but tickets though. Um. <laughs> so um, beyond just, uh, you know, the, I always talk about, um, you have to ask questions to succeed, but even more importantly, it's usually a disconnect between like the owner of the MSP and the engineers that causes uh, automation to not work and the MSP remain manual forever. Um, and so right, you right. folks have, you folks have a really good culture over there. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely unique for us just because, I mean, Eric and John are our two execs and they're in the trenches with us at all times. So, I mean, they definitely understand the importance of automation and how this core it is to your business running correctly.